Thank you very much, uh, dear organizers, for the invitation, for the possibility to participate here at this conference. It is a great privilege and honor to be here with so many esteemed colleagues and also uh, to meet some of students that I have already had the opportunity to meet uh, during their school time, uh, but also so many other PhD students that are uh, taking their, their having their PhD written here. Um, and it's also a great privilege to speak uh, here about the consequences of the springtime of nations in the individual's life in Croatia. So uh, in essence, I will speak shortly in three parts. First part will deal with the pre-1848 and 1848, uh, the situation or the developments in Croatia or the kingdoms of Slavonia and Croatia, or even wider kingdom of, kingdom of Dalmatia, Slavonia and Croatia in full, although we have to be aware that Dalmatia, although it was in name as part of the banal Croatia, uh, it was indeed under the Austrian uh, government or under the Austrian rule as well as uh, Istria uh, and Dubrovnik, uh, all these parts after the Napoleon's uh, the second part will deal uh, with the 1853, with the absolutism period, and afterwards we will speak, uh, I will show you about the developments after 1861 and the development of a separate autonomous Croatian legal area or the Croatian legal system, which until this period was practically one legal, uh, as we call it in Croatia, Croatian-Hungarian or Hungarian-Croatian legal system uh, in the, for the, uh, existing during the previous period from the joint union from 1102. Okay, uh, so when we speak about the period of pre-1848 uh, situation uh, in Croatia, uh, we have to mention the Croatian Illyri Illyrian or later renamed Cro uh, Croatian Renaissance Movement or Croatian Hrvatski Preporod, Croatian National Revival that began in the 1830s in line with the already happening revivals or the national movements in other countries in Europe. Croatia, as it was at that time, at the borderline of Western or Western Central Europe towards Turkey, practically everything was happening a little bit later, a little bit slower. So uh, those national move, that national movement uh, started only in the 1830s. And concerning the legal situation or legal position of Croatia vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Hungary and uh, in general considering the lands of the crown of St. Stephen, uh, the main issue have rising already in the 1790s, uh, but taking a prominence here during the 1830s was the case for Croatian uh, historical legal rights or precisely to be said, Jura Municipalia, uh, when we are speaking about the feudal, feudal constitutionality. Uh, and there are two very important works written at that time by Josip Kusevic, De Municipalibus Juribus et Statutis Regnorum Dalmatia, Croatia et Slavonia from 1832, and from the same year, written in Croatian language, Dissertatia e Liti Razgovor, Darovan gospodi poklisarom zakonskim i budućim zakonotvorcem kraljevinjah naših za buduću djetu ungarsku odaslanem držan po jednom starom domorodcu kraljevina ovih. Or, as you can see, the English translation, dissertation, or treat is given to the honorable lawful deputies and future legislators of our kingdoms delegated to the future Hungarian diet by an old patriot of these kingdoms in 1832. 1832 and the main issue uh, at that time was the question of the official language and the dispute about the use of Hungarian or Croatian, or better say at that time still Latin language in Croatian lands. When we speak of Croatian lands, I'm referring to Kingdom of Croatia and Slavonia. More specifically, full title again, Croatia, uh, Dalmatia, Croatia and Slavonia. Sometimes this can co cause some confusion especially this Dalmatia part, but as, as I say, also sometimes called banal Croatia, as it was the under government of uh, Ban. Uh, when, in general, when we are speaking about the political or legal situation in Croatia, here we have, main, here we had main programmatic documents uh, on Jura Municipalia as the basis of Croatian autonomy, autonomous rights within Hungarian kingdom or the kingdom of 
glance of the crown of St. Stephen. Uh, however, uh, when we speak in general, uh, this period is also the period of the establishment of political parties, uh, and this was the Illyrian uh, party, later renamed to People's Party, uh, Narodna Stranka, People National uh, Party. And concerning the national movement, we can notice, uh, and this is for me is something that, that should be stressed, uh, that Croatian national movement was based on the alliance between the nobility and the urban intelligence. However, the dominant element was the nobility, meaning the conservative element in the defense of municipal rights, but in general, rights of the nobility concerning the serf, their, ser, their serfs and other, uh, other rights belonging to the nobility. However, bourgeoisie uh, was still in its infancy and all the ideas of uh, present before in the French Revolution and so on were really weak in Croatia at that time because practically uh, the economical situation uh, was not at that level as it was in the Western Europe. Uh, underdeveloped economy really did not offer a wider basis for the development of burgesses or, or bourgeoisie uh, to acquire and to propagate the same ideas or values on a wider level as the situation was in the Western Europe. So practically, the Croatian national movement was practically more conservative, although we have to mention, uh, I have to mention that uh, Drashkovic in his book uh, showed his awareness of the economical, of the importance of the economical issues. And uh, he wrote, especially he's uh, dedicated a special separate chapter to the development of economy, economical basis, for example, on the letters of credit to be introduced, which were of great importance for the commercial development, as commerce was in, in these new uh, circumstances very significant. And he was aware how they were present and how they were used in the Western Europe and still in Croatia, in Hungary and in Croatia, they were not used at the same level. And he saw that without economic uh, development or this uh, satis uh, satisfactory level of economic development, they could not be built this liberal uh, bourgeoisie or uh, also political uh, movement. This is the situation that we have pre-1848. Uh, and then we come uh, to the 1848, and practically we are coming to the reaction to the happenings in Hungary, what's happening in Hungary, what's happening in uh, Pozun uh, at the Diet. And there is a direct consequence to, uh, to the new enactments of the Diet in and uh, on the 25th of March, 1848, uh, there was assembled the great national assembly of the Triune Kingdom of Dalmatia, Croatia, and Slavonia. But practically, this was the un unofficial uh, assembly. This was not the official assembly. This was from people from different venues or parts of the population who came together and proclaimed the, the, the basis was the old, uh, the old diet, but it was wider with the inclusion also of the of the liberal bourgeoisie, and they made the demands of the people, especially as a reaction towards the enactments in the, in the Diet and the Pozun. And we can say, we can see that one of the demands was that Josip Jelacic would be nominated, would be appointed as the Ban in Croatia. However, he was already appointed as the Ban on the 23rd of March. So practically they are writing their demands on the 25th, but however, the emperor, uh, he already appointed him on the 23rd of March, 1848, until he came to Croatia, took full power. It was only in the April, 1848, and he, started to uh, impose many regulations. Uh, some of them we will see are given in direct uh, reaction to the Hungarian uh, laws. For example, the abolition of serfdom, practically because there was a fear of the revolution of serfs in Croatia, knowing of, or if they got to know about the abolition of serfdom by the uh, Hungarian diet, they would probably react or rebel about the nobility, so he abolished serfdom in Croatia separately. He made this regulation, which will be sanctioned later by the 
uh, Croatian Assembly, and this is the official assembly that was convened on the 5th of June, 1848. Uh, there was, by the um, Ban's council, by the Ban Jelacic's council, established a new election order, which was very wide, something similar to what we had, uh, what you already mentioned, uh, for what happened in Hungary. Uh, and there was convened a uh, Croatian Sabor, or National Diet, on the 5th of June, 1848, uh, which convened in two sessions until 9th of July. It had a very wide legislative activity. It brought a number of laws. However, none of them, or one of them, was only sanctioned by the, by the king, and this was the Article 11 of 1848 on severing the ties with Hungary. So practically, among all the other laws, this was the only one that was sanctioned. However, the importance of uh, these acts would be that they foreshadowed, especially in one element, on the establishment of different uh, committees uh, of the assembly, of the diet, they foreshadowed the later reforms and the transition to the organization. And in that sense, we can see that this short-lived, practically a month, uh, a month in session uh, Sabor started uh, the legislation that will fo uh, follow on in 1861 and will make a longer consequences for the further development of legal situation of Croatia and in Croatia. Uh, this, uh, the acts of the first civic suburb of 1848, uh, so with the inclusion of the liberal bourgeoisie, uh, was the fact that they confirmed all the regulations enacted by Jelacic until the 5th of June when they convened on the 6th of June. And uh, one of the most important when we're speaking about the individual's life was this abolishment of serfdom. Uh, that was first uh, given on the 25th of April, as I said, this was one reaction practically, and this is what I wanted to know, to pull these uh, lines, that for example, we had first quite conservative nobility who didn't think about abolishing serfdom, but after the serfdom was abolished in Hungary, they had to react very quickly, and they abolished also the Banjelacic abolished the serfdom in Croatia, and the uh, Croatian diet, Croatian Sabor, sanctioned that and uh, practically uh, introduced a new law acting act on abolishment of serfdom. There were some other uh, acts as well, for example, on the regulation of relationship, special acts on the relationship with Hungary, one and the other with the relationship, uh, re regulation of relationship with Austria, but also uh, concerning Croatia, important are the act on the military border where it is proclaimed, but this is just a proclamation, that there were no strict consequences, meaning that they said that military board is insuper inseparable part of the three Yun kingdom. However, there were no consequences uh, specific. They, it was just a program towards the king uh, or to declare that military board is part of Croatia. However, in fact, nothing changed there. Neither the, neither the king uh, confirmed that law. Also, uh, it is interesting uh, to notice the act on the union with Serbian Vojvodina, uh, which was made uh, in, as part of that act, uh, part of Srijem, the one closest to the most eastern part of Srijem, was given uh, to Serbian Vojvodina, was practically seceded to Serbian Vojvodina, but under the condition, or to be more strictly legal terms under modus uh, in Roman legal terminology of the unity between Serbian Vojvodina and the three Yun kingdoms. So practically Srijem was given under the condition of this future joint position within, uh, within the empire. And in the end, uh, one important element was the manifesto of the Croatian Slavonian people proclaiming uh, the autonomous rights of uh, the kingdom of, of the three Yun kingdom uh, within the empire and the program for future uh, legislative uh, activity uh, of the Sabor, but also as a manifesto towards the king and towards the other nations within, uh, within the uh, empire. Uh, 
Uh, when we look in general, mostly uh, the legislative activity de dealt with the public law regula regulations. Um, I would say international level, meaning intranational, not international as we think today international, but meaning regulating the relationship between, between Croatia and uh, Hungary and Austria and military border and Dalmatia and Istria, practically this part uh, regulation, regulating the relationship with Austria and also, as I mentioned, with uh, Serbian Vojvodina. And the main uh, goal, uh, the main aim was safeguarding the Croatian historical state rights. Uh, private law was not in the center of the laws, was not Par was not regulated in the laws that were enacted. However, we should notice that there were created a number of parliamentary committees to deal with the internal matters and draft act proposals, also regarding private laws. Uh, however, they were not enacted as the sabor was disbanded after a short period of time. So uh, after this, in general, it has been already said about the Constitution 1849 and the absolutism. Uh, following this, um, uh, the new uh, constitution. And uh, this is a period where the reforms come from above. And uh, this is another form of uh, external element or the external influence that in Croatia we will see a reaction and a separate development. Uh, more, most important of these, of these new uh, changes are the introduction of the principle of equality, although the principle of equality of all citizens was already introduced in 1848 with the demands of the people, with the, um, with the laws of the Croatian Sabor. Uh, however, most important for the individual, for an individual's life, was the introduction, introduction of the ABGB uh, in, uh, on the 1st of May, 1853, uh, which had primary importance. So for example, when we look at the individual's life, these are the most of the relationships that he enters into are private law relations and private law relations that are dealt with the ABGB. Uh, so practically, this was, I would say, the most important important element or the most important consequence for a private individual in his private life uh, of the 1848 uh, development. Although, also, uh, what I would stress here uh, concerning the importance of um, this introduction of ABGB uh, is the fact that with this we have a full reception of Roman law tradition in uh, Croatia, in, Cro in Croatia as such, or in the three union uh, kingdom, because practically when we uh, look at the reception in the period before that, it was only partial because practically Hungarian Croatian or Hungarian customary law, as it was based on tripartitum and later laws, was not the, re uh, not the received Roman law as it developed in the Western uh, Europe. Practically, we can see traces of this reception of the changing of the legal idea or the legal mind uh, in the around the mid 18th century. For example, in Hushti and his Praktika, he, this is the first time that we see that uh, customary law is put into the Roman legal categories. So practically we have customary law, customary uh, institutes, however the terminology is now changing, is switching to the Roman law, Roman legal terminology practically in line what the Hungarian uh, students and Croatian students are learning also at the Western universities, at the universities in Germany and so on, and practically they are bringing back these ideas of the usus modernus pandectarum back to Hungary and to Croatia, and they are putting into new categories those old legal institutions. Uh, and practically, I would say this um, scholarly uh, or academic reception was practically finished with Kellerman, Imre Kellerman from 1818. So from 1740s till 1818, I would say that the academic reception of Roman law finished. However, this was not followed in the practice because we had old legal uh, institutes. And this is where, uh, where the... Uh, practically where the ABGB uh, comes and where it's why it's important because it brought the final breakup with the feudal state following the abolition, abolishment of serfdom. 
as I said, introduced freedom of contract, protection of absolute ownership, testamentary freedom, all as usual as I also teach in Roman law, three main precepts of Roman law, the, why the Roman law was the basis of the private law in Europe. These are these three pillars and practically the freedom of, uh, of the ownership as the basis of freedom of the contract and the freedom of the testamentary freedom, practically giving this liberty to the, uh, to the person, to the individual, uh, in, uh, to the, to, in, the, in the Triune Kingdom. Also, it had uh, rules concerning acquisition of citizenship, which were enforced until 1879, and the common Hungarian creation uh, rules on citizenship law was introduced. Uh, and uh, one, I would say, uh, specific long-term effect of the introduction of ABGB, that the same legal system was, from this period, present in, in the majority of Croatian lands, meaning in the Triune Kingdom, as well as the Dalmatia and Istria, so practically one part on the Austrian and one the Hungarian part, they had the same legal system. And uh, I will shortly, because I see my time is already up, uh, I will shortly move to 8061, uh, the Croatian Sabor that we know that were supposed to be for the new diet uh, at the general level. Uh, it enacted many new laws, however, only the article 42 uh, from 61 was sanctioned, uh, was confirmed by uh, the king, which formed the program for the new negotiations. Uh, 61 also brought the creation of Croatian Supreme Court, uh, and also there was a Croatian Slavonian royal chancery introduced until the Croatian, Hungarian Croatian settlement. However, what is uh, for an individual, and in my opinion, very important, is uh, the decision of the Croatian Sabor. Uh, from 1861, so after the return of the constitutionality, to uh, keep up, to take over the acts introduced during the absolutism. It practically, it uh, allowed the creation of the autonomous Croatian legal system. Until that moment, there was one Hungarian Croatian legal system. However, when Hungary went back to the old customary law of the pre-constitution, of the pre-absolutism, Croatia continued with the laws, with private laws from this absolutist period, so practically it created a specific autonomous Croatian legal system, and do, I, there are also a list of other codes, but just two most important, uh, ABGB, which was called also, uh, it's interesting, for, for example, when we speak about ABGB, we say on one side, we speak about the Croatian ABGB, we call it Opci Građanski Zakonik, OGZ, as a difference to ABGB. So when we speak about ABGB, this is Austrian. When we speak OGZ, this is Croatian ABGB because there were no new novellas taken over which were made in Austria. So practically, as it was introduced in 1852, it just continued all the way until the dissolution as it was introduced then, and it became the object of separate commentaries and so on. And so we can see in conclusion this timeline, so I will not go again through all that, but just to show how uh, there were practically enforced uh, or attempts to enforce some uh, decisions in the Croatian legal system, how, which brought very important changes. Uh, one was, as I said, this abolish, abolishment of serfdom, and the other was imposed modernization from above, civil law and civil procedural law, which in the end, with the return of the constitutionality, enabled the development of the autonomous Croatian legal system. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>